Hello class, um, welcome to our very first lecture on introduction to statistics. Uh, this particular chapter focuses on data and data types and a brief introduction to descriptive statistics. I'm sure you agree with me that um, statistics is all around. We, we don't have to go very far to find examples of statistics. So we, if we think about the performance in our classes in terms of the average performance on an exam or the distribution of the grades, what was the smallest versus the largest value, um, or just uh, measures of, of just how much variability there was in terms of our grade performance or exam performance would all be examples of statistics. For those of you that are into sports, um, I'm sure you will know things such as batting scores in baseball um, or the number of yards that particular players ran in football or if we're dealing with basketball, the number of rebounders and so forth. So there are all sorts of examples of statistics. Um, company sales, for example, uh, would be examples of that. And also things like stock prices. So statistics is all around us and therefore we need to make some sense of all of this information because it can be used to influence decisions that we have to make in running organizations. Whether or not the organization is for profit or not for profit. So let's take a quick look at this chapter to get us started uh, for the semester. So some of the topics I will move through very quickly and I will not necessarily go through each slide in the presentation in detail, but that you have access to the slides so that you could uh, do a review of your own, on your own, but also the textbook as well that might be able to give you some additional explanation of the concepts that exist. Okay, so we'll talk briefly about um, what is statistics and I'm just going to change my, the color of my pen for a moment. Let's go with this yellow. Well, let's go with this one right here. And we'll talk a bit about data and data types, um, descriptive stats, statistical inference, and so forth. So just to kind of give you an introduction to these uh, concepts, okay? So what do you understand by statistics? One of the ways I like to explain it is that statistics is the study of a subset or portion of information, of a big body of information, which we often refer to as a population. And basically what we observe in that subset gives us information about the population. It tells us something about the entire population. So for example, if I were to try to figure out right now, what are the views of young people to the idea of smoking? The entire population, and if, if I'm focusing on, on Nova Scotia, so the entire population of young people, however we define youth, if it is from 16 to 29, um, those individuals would represent my population. But if I surveyed a thousand youth, then that is my sample. So we look at the sample to learn something about that population. Uh, and if the sample is properly chosen, the information that we get from that sample can be quite uh, powerful and useful in helping us to learn about the population itself. So the term statistics can refer to numerical facts such as averages, medians, percents, index numbers that help us understand a variety of business and economic situations, but not just business and economic situations, social situations as well. This is a, a business course, yes, and that's the context within which we are learning this material, but clearly there are other applications in the social sciences as well. All right? Statistics also refer to the art and science of data collection, analyzing and presenting that information. So combine that with what I also said, which is about analyzing sample data to learn about a population. Applications are numerous in accounting. We could take a subset of accounts and look at the balances on those accounts and see what the average balance on an account is. Um, we could look at it in the study of economics and see look at economic data around production, around exports, imports, and so forth, and learn about that, forecasting growth in the economy, looking at finance or the performance of stocks in a stock market can also be uh, quite valuable as well. In marketing, sometimes we are concerned about consumer behavior. We want to know how consumers are actually going to, to react or respond to particular ad campaigns. 
In production, we want to look at production output, whether or not processes are productive, uh, whether or not we're producing defective items or defective products. And so quality data is important. And information systems, a variety of uh, information is often used by administrators to help with making decisions, right? Uh, also, if you are analyzing your computer networks, you look at things like the runtime or downtime and so forth, uh, some of the kind of the amount of crashes that you have, all of that is um, fairly useful data, all right? So data and data sets, let's start off with that. Before we could begin any statistical analysis, we must have data. And that data has to be collected in some form. So we will talk about data sources, but let's understand the basics about data. So data are the facts and figures collected, analyzed, and summarized for presentation and interpretation. So if I were collecting data on the performance uh, on assignments, I would take all my students, look at all of the assignments, and collect all of the marks for these assignments. And that would give me a data set on student performance on assignments. All right. If I wanted to collect data on, say, how fast a car types, different types of cars go from zero to 60, then I could take a, a, a collection of cars, about 10, 15 cars, and measure how long it takes them to get from zero to 60. And then that would um, give me the um, data that I need to do the analysis in this case. Okay. So, when we collect data, we call it a data set. That data set has a number of um, attributes to it. One of them is called elements. So the elements of a data set will essentially be all of the items that we collected data on. So the 15 cars or the 20 cars in my data set will be the elements, 15 elements or, 15, or 20 elements. If I'm collecting data on the speed, how long, it, no, the time, how long it takes to go from 0 to 60, then that is a variable of interest okay um, and then of course the set of all of these measurements if I collect all of that for the 15 or 20 cars we will call that my observations all right so each each time I, I I measure how long it took that car to get from 0 to 60 that is an observation that is part of the data set so if there are n elements in that set there are n observations okay the total number of data values in a complete data set is the number of elements multiplied by the number of variables. So sometimes we actually observe more than one variable on each element. So for example, let's go back to the car. If we have 15 cars, but in addition to monitoring or measuring how long it takes from 0 to 60 uh, miles per hour, we also um, collected data on whether or not it was automatic versus a standard. Okay. And then also we may collect information on the uh, type of car that it is in terms of the model. So if I also collect that kind of information, I now have three variables times 15 cars, so I would have 45 data elements in there. Okay? So, sorry, I would have 45 values in the observational values in that data set. The number of elements is still 15. So here's an example with, uh, we're looking at some companies and we want to look at which stock exchange that they listed on, the annual sales, and then the earnings per share. And so we have three variables here, and then we have one, two, three, four, five elements. And so three times five is a total of 15 values in that data set. And all of those 15 values constitute the data set. It's important to keep those in mind. So how can we classify types of data or measures? We have something that we call scales of measurement. In other words, how are we measuring the data and what are the scales that we use to classify or name that, that data type? Okay. So we have four of them, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. A nominal data Essentially, uh, just data that just have labels attached to them, but the labels have n do not necessarily have a hierarchy to them. So if I'm just looking at 
uh, shirts in a room. Uh, we could have red shirts. We could have blue shirts. Green shirts. So all of these are different types of colors. All right. And none is better than the other. So in a case like that, that's just nominal data. All right. Ordinal data, however, is a little different. If we are going to talk about categorical labels, yes, labels, sorry, but there is a relationship or there's a hierarchy between them. Let's look at the example of, uh, say, our grades. You could get an A in a course. Sorry. You get an A in a course. You get, let's start off with A plus, A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, and so on. So in this case, these are all categories. But this is better, A plus is better than an A. A minus is better than a B plus, right? So that then, um, there is a hierarchy, but the values are categorical as well. So in that case, we call that ordinal. And if in case you're not sure, think of order. What comes from order? So the data will help us be, uh, be able to put it in some kind of order. A plus A, A minus B plus B, B minus, and so forth. All right? We have interval data. Interval data tends to be um, a little bit tricky to, to grasp. Um, the data have properties of ordinal data. So there is this kind of um, um, hierarchy. And there is um, there's usually some kind of fixed unit of measure um, that expresses the, the values in between two measures. So for example, if we think of temperature, we could talk about degrees. So one degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. So there's this unit of measures called the degree. And so 80 degrees, 70 degrees, 60 degrees, there's, there are units of measures in between there, which is in this case a degree. But part of the characteristic of um, interval data is that it has no absolute zero. It has no absolute zero. In other words, zero temperature, it doesn't mean that temperature doesn't exist. It is just a reference. Right? So the values tend to be references. I'll give you another example. If we think about, say, customer satisfaction values, so five is extremely satisfied, four is satisfied, three is neutral, two, not so satisfied, one, very dissatisfied. What is zero? It doesn't mean that there isn't a state of satisfaction to zero. If you decide to use zero, zero is very, very unsatisfied. It doesn't mean that satisfaction does not exist. It just means that this is another reference point. This is just a reference point in terms of how dissatisfied or satisfied that you are. So there is no absolute zero. And the other thing too is that the ratios don't make sense. So if I gave you a score of, say if, if one person gave a score of five to a restaurant and another person gave a score of say three to that restaurant, or even another person gave a score of one, the person who gave the score of five is not five times more satisfied than the person who gave a score of one. All right? They're not five times more satisfied. That ratio, five to one, does not make a whole lot of sense. Five to three does not make a whole lot of sense either. 1.67. So you cannot say that person is 1.67 more times satisfied or that this person is five times more satisfied. It doesn't quite work that way, all right? So in interval data tends not to be, um, is, is really when we have references and not absolute zeros. On the other hand, our ratio data has an absolute zero. So the data have all the properties of interval data and the ratio of two values is actually meaningful. See here? Is meaningful. So distance, height, wait time. So somebody who um, ran a race in 20 minutes 
and another person who ran it in 10, the person who ran the race in 10 is twice as fast as the person who ran it in 20. Okay, zero time is absolute. Zero weight means that there's no weight that exists. Zero height, you know, does not exist. So the abs there is an absolute zero that makes sense. So you see here, there is an absolute zero. Okay, so now we could actually take data and sort of um, group it into two broad categories, which we call categorical and quantitative data. And in other words, we could take those four different scales and group them into two. And categorical data is data that have labels, numerical or quantitative data, data that's expressed in the form of numbers. Let's um, go to this graph right here, and so we could see it all put together. So we collect data. The data can be categorical or quantitative. In other words, we could call this qualitative over here. Qualitative qualitative data and this qualitative data can be either numeric or non-numeric in nature. Numeric data, I just gave you an example of customer satisfaction scores where we know that five is a category, three is a category, right? But in that case, um, if I use um, customer satisfaction values, then that would be ordinal data, all right? But I could actually put people into groups, students into groups, one to ten, ten groups, and you, your group number becomes an important uh, value. There's no hierarchy between the groups. In other words, group ten is not better than group nine, or group nine is not better than group eight. So that's just categories or labels, but it's numeric in nature, and so therefore that would be nominal. Non, um, so non-numeric data is when we have things like yellow, green, orange shirts, and so on. So that would just be nominal. And then if we have, so red, orange, green, these, that would be nominal data. But ordinal data, on the other hand, would be if we have orders like A, B, C, where A is better than B and B is better than C. It's non-numeric, but it's also ordered. And in terms of numeric data, we have interval data like temperature, for example, GMAT scores, and so on. And then ratio data, where the ratio makes sense, where we can look at weight, height, speed, all of those sorts of things, volume, and all of that. Okay? So those are examples of um, we're looking at data and how we could sort of categorize data in all its various forms.